Right, so you've gone back to the regiment. Yeah. Um, and this is the, it, is this Royal? Royal Anglia Regiment, yeah. 2nd Battalion Royal Anglia Regiment. Yeah. What, what did you do uh, when you went back to them? What was your first sort of operational duty? Or t I think we produced a CD. Yeah, we did. We went into the recording studio and I'd used a few of my little tricks, which I was taught here um, on different uh, tracks, if you like. But uh, the devastating news was when we got back was what we're losing the band, the band's getting scrapped. Options for change. The, ba the battalion bands are going. All the angling bands are going. All the other bands are going, the line bands, should I say. And we're all going to divisional bands. So we're all part of the Queen's Division. So within our division we had the Royal Anglins, the Queen's Regiment, the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, and they were all underneath the Queen's Division umbrella, if you like, and they were going to go to two Queen's Division bands out those battalion bands. And unfortunately there wasn't a place for me in either of them. So I got sent up to the Highland Band of the Scottish Division, where I spent eight years dressed up as a Scotsman, from Leicester. Uh, I did see a lot of the world with the uh, Scots, the Scots did. Um, handing over Hong Kong was one of the highlights. Uh, recreating the Edinburgh Tattoo in New Zealand, in Wellington. Singapore, not Singapore, Kuala Lumpur. Um, South Africa. Uh, I, I did have a good time there. And they, you needed a sense of humour to uh, wear a kilt and be a jock. But it was good, and it was. I don't. I don't. You know. I was a bit scared at first about it all, but um, right. as being an Englishman, I thought they're going to they're going to kill me. But uh, it was quite good when the football was on when Gaza scored that goal in Euro '96. As I was there, that was a fantastic day. But uh, I got the opportunity to move to back down south to the band of the parachute regiment, where I never looked back. So I moved there as a sergeant, and I just literally jumped at the chance, excuse the pun, and later on I did. So just picking up on what you did at Nella again? Uh, we'd spent a lot of time in the guard room as guard duties, which nobody particularly liked, but that was the way it was. Um, a student bandmaster would be the guard commander, and an NCO, Lance Corporal or Corporal, would be his 2IC second in command of the guard. So it'd be a tw um, you'd go on round about just after tea you'd form up, you'd do a fire picket drill with the uh, Provo sergeant, um, then you'd go to the guard room and then you'd go on a stag list which was what time the guys would go on the gate uh, and I was 2IC so I, I, at least I was in the warm and uh, you'd just make sure the guys were doing the job properly and answer the phone to any would-be emergency or helping people out. Um, during the day, no, it was it was a day. Sorry, I'll have to go back. It was day and night. It wasn't because we used to the, the phone used to be constantly ringing, and you're like the ex, the operator plugging them in, plugging them into all these offices. So you, your ear was burning red for that phone because it was constantly ringing. But uh, later they changed it, and uh, the guard duties were um, put to bed as such because I suppose less and less people came here, so they couldn't afford to have, well, they wouldn't have trainees now, would they? But that's how it worked then. The guys had to run the show. But you used to be able to get your head down up to about lunchtime before returning to duty. It was, it was OK. I remember being here one Christmas day in there as well, which was, which was all right. I think I blagged a bit of dinner out of somebody. All right, let's get back to the Scots then. Yeah. So just in terms of, um, you know, you covered all those things. I mean, um, one of the areas that we're looking at is defence engagement and conflict resolution. Right. Now, those it sounds to me like they're much more ceremonial, so it probably is, yeah. sort of... Um... I saw the Queen more with the Scots Div, with the Highland Band, um, singing. Because we would, we would play at the garden party at Holyrood. There was two bands based, there was the Highland Band and the Lowland Band and we both used to share duties. The Queen would come, we'd form up outside Holyrood Palace, usually a military band and a pipe band. She'd come and arrive and all the royal salutes and everything. Then during her stay, we'd, we'd, we'd uh, play in the garden, like, as like Buckingham Palace, but her residence up, up in Edinburgh. 
So that was a, a lot of duty zone, a lot of long afternoons underneath a gazebo or whatever. But um, yeah, that was one of the duties we carried out. And there was a lot of ceremonial stuff even up at, up at the castle as well. I know the castle quite well, especially for the Edinburgh tattoo. We did two years on the tattoo and one year off, which was busy. Um, whole of August pretty much, two on a Saturday night, and that was a, a turnaround at about 10 o'clock and you finish about midnight, two shows. The first couple of years it was good, but after a while it's, it's not as glamorous as it looks on telly, because you're up in a dungeon somewhere in your rest area, or you can't sit down because you can't. It's just quite tiring. Then we'd have our leave in like, September when all the school used to go back. So it was a quite a hard month. It was a tough month. Enjoyable, but you know, um, you played a lot of golf in the day. If you're a golfer, uh, the guy, those local golf clubs used to do a good deal. So if you're a golfer, you're a laugh. You play golf in the day and go and bang your drum in the evening to, to millions. And obviously you went and you hand over at Hong Kong. That's right. I was going to come on to that. Yeah, fortunate to be based over in Hong Kong for the last six to eight weeks of British rule. And we are on that parade where we got absolutely wet through. I don't know if you remember it. Um, Prince Charles was there and we were there on duty with the Black Watch. They were the battalion to hand over. And I think it was the Scots Guards bands were there as well, where we met Chris Patton. We, uh, I met him. We did a, a farewell for all the locals in the Hong Kong Stadium. Um, we were having a beer out of a icy bin in the concourse after the show, and this limousine went by. We sort of stopped. Oh no! And it was Chris Patton. He came up and he said, "What a cracking show it was! You know, brilliant lads. You know, well done and good luck." You know, thanks for coming. Um, you mentioned the um, you mentioned the weather. Um, you know, I've asked about obviously the wind instruments. They struggle a little yes. bit with temperature. But you know, obviously a drum is a skin, and as it gets hot and cold, does it just talk a bit about how weather can affect it, and, and then go into yeah, some um, of the worst conditions you've played? Obviously, drum heads uh, they used to be made of hide years ago. Now they're pretty much plastic based plastic coated, plastic based. So when, say you're playing a snare and the rain lands on it, it does affect the, the pitch and the, the sound of it to some extent. So when nobody's looking, you just tip it off and you carry on. Symbol's the same, it dampens them quite, quite dramatically. Bass wasn't too bad because you hit the side of it. But um, yeah, the, the Hong Kong was probably the, the, the wettest thing I've ever been. Um, it absolutely was a monsoon. And at the time we were wearing, the headdress was like a feather bonnet, like a feather busby. And it just looked absolutely rubbish, it looked like a dead cat with a hackle. Um, but it was, a, it was a memory I'll never forget. And I, I think I was even on the, um, the telly, you know, banging the pair of cymbals there, because my mum and dad saw me. And uh, we were the last, that was the last parade, and we were the last flight out of Hong Kong at 23.59 on the, I think it was the 30th of June, 97. Um, and I went home and I couldn't believe the time difference. It felt like I'd only just played about two hours ago. And there I am back at home again. Oh yeah, we saw you on the telly. Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah.